Welcome to the most powerful G on the planet. You are about to study fifth generation cellular. Let's get started. Let's start with fourth generation cellular, something that we know, and morph it all the way to 5G in 19 easy steps. So here you see the real database. This is the information that actually is above the HSS. And down below here we see diameter relay agents, of course carrying the diameter protocol, and underneath it we see the classic EPC or the Evolved Packet Core products. These are the devices that we're going to convert from 4G to 5G. Let's get started. Our first step is to unify all of that data. So we're going to actually come up ideally with the perfect data structure to run our network. This means no rogue databases. Instead, we're going to have the unified data repository. Think if this is the data that would have been behind the HSS, all neat and organized, everything in one place. So we're going to get rid of diameter, no diameter in 5G. We're going to replace all of those diameter interfaces with microservices. So here they are, lining them all up for you. These are the microservices that replace those diameter interfaces. The microservice interfaces are all going to get representational state transfer, which is just a code name for HTTP. No more diameter now. HTTP will be the chosen protocol. Do you remember those diameter relay agents? Well, we're not using diameter, but we need something that would be similar to a relay agent. And there's where a reverse proxy comes in. My favorite reverse proxy by far is Nginx. There are other ones out there as well. I'm running this in high availability. There's gonna be three of them. Any one of them fails, the other two will take over. Our mobility management entity becomes the AMF. That's the access management function. MME gone, AMF in. The AMF is going to need a representational state transfer interface as well, so we give it a RESTful interface and connect it to Nginx. For illustrative purposes only, let's add an E node B. We have the antenna array, remote radio head, and the BBU, the baseband unit. But we don't want to use the 4G antenna array anymore. We're, so we're going to swap out that E node B with a G. That's Giga node B. We have the active antenna array, the DU, which is the distributed unit, and the control unit, which actually is going to be sort of part of what used to be the baseband unit. In 4G, we had an SGW, but we're not going to have one of those in 5G. So we push the, the SGW services into the CU, and the SGW goes away. For illustrative purposes, I'm going to show that we're adding a PGW, but it's not going to last very long. We split the PGW into control plane, user plane separation, or CUPS. So this top PGW is really the brains of the PGW. We call it the control plane. The bottom PGW we call the user plane. Let's rename those components. So the top component, which was the brains, we're going to call that the session manager function. The bottom part, because it's really the user plane, we call it the user plane function. Now let's invent a protocol to connect the SMF back with the UPF, and it's going to be proprietary just for mobile, just for 5G and a tail end of 4G, and that's called the Packet Forward Control Protocol. We're going to learn about that here as well. The SMF wants to be part of the club, so it's going to need a RESTful interface. So there it is. We give it one, the N, SMF. Services-based architectures never really show a reverse proxy. So let's get that Nginx out of the picture and show it the way that any other service-based engineer would draw it, just with a flat line like this, showing everything interconnected. We know Nginx is there. Now let's bring the drawing in a little bit, make it more compact. Here you go. Now let's remove the roaming type microservices, leaving only the bare minimum microservices that we need to understand 5G. Now let's add some really nice colors, show all of the protocols kind of all in one place, and we are ready to start class.